Hello scholars! On this episode of You Choose Lore, we are going over Master Willem and what exactly Inside is. This is a continuation of the Bergenworth podcast with uh, Master Pilbeam from Jerk Sands Frontiers and Sinclair Lore from the Sinclair Lore Snack Covenant podcast. Links in the description. Uh, so without any further delay, uh, here, here, here we go. There's this one thing sent by Miss It's a random iteration of letters, so I don't know how to pronounce that. Okay. <laughs> uh, he says, uh, the Lunarium Key says, in his final years, Master, L- Master Willem was fond of the lookout and the rocking chair that he kept there for meditation. In the end, it is said that he left his secret with the lake. Uh, the description yeah. suggests that Willem's life has ended, but when the hunter encounters Willem, he is alive, if perhaps somehow not quite right. What is Willem's status mm. when he when the hunter finds him? He is... Well, he's not dead, because when you encounter him, he's like... Sort of, he flails around and sort of gurgles. And I, the right. idea is that, like, either he is half in our world and, like, the other half of his mind is sort of projected somewhere else. So he's in this, he's, like, half asleep, half awake, like, not sure what's happening. The other explanation is that um, when you encounter, this is going toward the end of the game, you you encounter um, a Mensis who are an offshoot of the Healing Church, and they encounter a great one. And it says that, like, this is a confusing thing in the translation. It says that um, the, their encounter with that resulted in the stillbirth of their brain, which is a nonsensical sentence. And I don't know why they went <laughs> with it. But if you look at the Japanese, it's quite clear. It just says that when they encountered it, their brains were rotted away or like their brains began to decay. So it's possible it's that. That hmm. um, Willem, may, he just like he saw too much or something and his his mind began to sort of decay and rot away and what we've encountered is he's basically like senile at this point okay yeah uh and then gunter orlor or orgelorg uh says <laughs> i believe that willem being a husk controlled by the growths is quite plausible drawing on inspiration from a lovecraft story called the whisper in the darkness the story is about yeah. a scholar who gets contacted by someone who has had contact with an extraterrestrial race. When he goes to visit the man, he finds him in a debilitated state, dressed in robes, confined in a chair in the darkness, barely able to speak or yeah. whisper. Yeah, and his uh, his brain is taken by uh, aliens that fly it. They they, t- they put his brain in a cylinder and they fly it away to, uh, I think it's Venus or something. Pluto, yeah. I, don't, I don't remember. This one I have not read. Yeah, Um. so... The thing about Willem is when you meet him, he, we skipped over this, but it's kind of significant. He has a giant kind of fungal growth on the back of his neck. These sort of like fungus things reaching upward. Yeah. Um, that's very similar to, you can get a thing called the milkweed rune. Which oh. It's um, sort of the culmination of what the healing church were doing before they collapsed. Which, when you use it, you become the host to this strange plant that grows out of the back of your neck. And it's um, it looks like a more mature version of what Willem's done. So you have this thing, it grows out of the back of your neck, and it, it grows up and it covers your head. And the way it's described is like, this plant is is special because these strange slug things, which are the... They they call them, like, the augurs or the familiars of the Great Ones, as in, like, there's something that leads you toward the Great Ones. Um, Live in and eat this plant. So the idea is once you, if you have this milkweed rune on you, you become kind of half human, half plant slash mushroom. And because you're that, you can host a colony of these weird slug things. So Willem looks a lot like he is almost at that level. Where he's sort of, he's started to get the growth of the plant on his body, but it hasn't quite covered him yet. Yeah, I was thinking about that today. And um, you know how in one of the podcasts, um, you and I mentioned that certain flowers um, in Bloodborne that are located on creatures could be going through like a moonlight synthesis yeah, yeah. where they feed off moonlight and maybe like recharge the host with arcane energy or something yeah like rom for example has flowers on her mm. right and so maybe she's feeding off of the moonlight and gets her arcane en- energy that way and i was thinking like what if the growths on uh, willem's back 
serve a similar purpose where he's like harvesting moon energy yeah because um the the plant you turn into says you become a lumen wood which is the name of the plants in the garden in the cathedral that um like they're called they're lumen woods and lumen flowers and when you see the lumen flowers they look like sunflowers and i'm i'm pretty sure the idea is oh sunflower gets light from the sun a lumen flower must get light from the moon Mm -hmm. Uh, so is is that what the phantasms are like attracted to then it seems like that yeah because when you use uh, milkweed you use it in um you equip a thing called the cause parasite at the same time and the idea is that like one is not really useful without the other if you have the parasite it doesn't do anything um, and if you have the lumen, the uh, the milkweed rune, it makes you into this plant, but that doesn't really do much by itself. You have to combine the two. So if you have the milkweed rune and the cause parasite, the milkweed rune, like the, it just says it stimulates it. I think the idea is like you become a better host. So suddenly instead of just having like cl- you, the cause parasite is just like a blob that you clasp, but if you've got milkweed on, suddenly your whole body becomes host to these slugs. And you can start flailing around and whipping with the slugs like they're a weapon. And there's a um, a specific move you can do that most people don't... Because it's like an obscure sort of combination of attacks you wouldn't normally do unless you were showing off. But if you do it, you will literally vomit out a cloud of slugs. So the idea is they're all just like living inside your body because you're becoming this plant. And just to kind of add on to what Master Pilbeam was saying there, if Master Willem is supposed to be like a guy who sort of adopted the milkweed rune, but it hasn't quite worked out for him, and the point of the will of, and the point of the milkweed rune is that it absorbs the moon's energy, which phantasms feed off of, so the host becomes a host to these phantasm parasitic slug things, then that would mean that Master Willem actually has slugs in his body and that are doing things to him. If we look at Madman's knowledge, it's like we can see one of those phantasm slugs kind of fuming out of the skull as in there used to be phantasm phantasm, uh, slugs in the skull. So I think the idea is that Master Willem has a bunch of phantasms in his brain that have kind of eaten away at his brain and so now all that's left is the shell of the guy. And you think well like maybe that's a bad thing, well maybe that's what Master Willem wants, maybe he wants this. Maybe this is how a person can ascend his brain into the cosmos is by having phantasms in the skull and eating away at it. And that also brings me back to what Gunter Orgelorg was saying about the Whisper in Darkness, where it's about a guy who has his brain removed, who has his consciousness removed from his body and put into a jar so that way it can be flown through interstellar space. So that might really be what's going on with Master Willem, where he has used these uh, phantasm slugs that are in his brain to eat his brain, and because his brain, his consciousness, is now inside of these aquatic slugs that are capable of traveling through interstellar space, that's where his mind is now, that's where his consciousness is. His body, his physical human body, is still stuck there by the lake, but his consciousness is elsewhere. Uh, and then also really quickly, let's go over what the one winged says about insight, where he says insight, knowledge, or inner eyes. To start off basic, call this into your mind. The insight counter at the top right corner of the HUD shows you how much insight your character currently has. With one insight, you can see the doll and the dream come to life. With 40 insight, your character is able to see the amygdala hanging around everywhere. With 60, uh, Murgo's crying can be heard everywhere in the world, which means that your character is able to comprehend those beings and their presence with insight in contrast to before when the PC had no insight. I believe that the eye symbol uh, directly indicates how many inner eyes the PC has. When you have one insight, you have one inner eye. When you have 69, you have 69 inner eyes. When a brain sucker sticks his into your head, he decreases your insight counter in the HUD, which means he directly sucks out your insight uh, out of what seems to be your brain. Why else is he called a brain sucker? Uh, when you lose a certain amount of, uh, of that insight, you lose your ability to see slash hear and therefore comprehend earlier, uh, earlier mentioned entities. That means that insight has to be something physical that can be physically removed from your body. Also, you can buy with insight at the insight shop. It would make uh, it wouldn't make any sense if you would be able to trade in knowledge for items, as knowledge about things can't be removed from you. It just isn't possible. We don't have the technology, which further hints that insight has to be uh, has to be something physical and not metaphysical. 
Also think about the word insight. It consists of two words, in and sight. Sight on the inside, eyes on the inside, Illuminati convert. Jokes aside, I think that insight is a term for a special perception that grows inside the brain of the PC, very different from every other sense given to the PC by nature. I think insight literally means having eyes on the inside, which grants the individual the perception of all things in human. But as we know from the Madman's Knowledge and Great One's Wisdom's items, the heads of humans with great, uh, with great amounts of insight aren't filled with eyes, but what seem to be phantasms, familiars of great ones, as stated in the empty phantasm shell item. Further indicating that the eyes are in truth eggs, which develop into phantasms eventually. That means that developing inner eyes is the necessary first step towards enlightenment. As stated in the milkweed rune, a celestial attendant feeds phantasms in its luscious bed. I'm pretty sure that means that a celestial attendant grows phantasms inside the brain area by feeding them brain fluid. The brain area filled with brain fluid being the luscious bed mentioned in the rune. It also states that phantasms guide us and lead us to further discoveries, which further confirms that phantasms are a source of enlightenment, which, uh, which in the end explains about everything there is to say about insight in Bloodborne. So this theory is basically saying that insight it's, it's basically just parasite eggs. That uh, what's going on is that inside of people's brains are these phantasms, and they lay their eggs inside of people's brains. And so when Master Willem says, our eyes are yet to open, what he's actually saying is, the eyes in our brain have yet to hatch. And when they hatch, something is going to happen. The world is going to get a bit wonky. And then when Miklash says, So plant eyes on our brains. In other words, plant eggs on our brains. Plant eggs the same way that a parasite will plant eggs on things. And then there's that really important line where he says, phantasms guide us and lead us to further discoveries. So if the insight are really just supposed to be these phantasm eggs, then that means that for guidance, a person would put these phantasms in his brain to gain insight, or the phantasms develop inside the brain, and that's what allows these further discoveries. That's what allows you to see the amygdala, or see the doll, or see whatever. And take note of the word guide us. We see that word on several other occasions. So let's take a look at the eye rune. This is the rune that Master Willem drops. Eyes symbolize the truth Master Willem sought in his research, disillusioned by the limit of human intellect, while Willem looked to beings from higher planes for guidance. So if the eyes are supposed to be these parasite eggs, if the eyes are phantasms, and the phantasms are the things that guide us, then that also means that phantasms are from higher planes. They are actually aliens. They are not of this world. And maybe that explains that when a person has those phantasms in his brain, when a person has that insight, he's able to see things that are not from this plane of existence, things that are from these otherworldly dimensions. And again, take note of the word guidance. So when we look at the rune that itself is called Guidance, it's a worm. This is a parasitic worm that's feeding on a little bit of moonlight. A rune that Ludwig drops, and you know, if you've watched the Parasites of Bloodborne video, you know that my take on it is that there are parasites in Ludwig's eye, and that's what's really guiding him. Ludwig was certain that these playful dancing sprites offered guidance, so the things that are guiding people are phantasms and vermin and these insects that are inside people's bodies and controlling them one way or another. And just like with Master Willem who looked to beings from higher planes for guidance, Master Willem is guided in a similar way to how Ludwig is guided. He's guided by these phantasm slugs that are in his brain. And when he lines his brain with these insects, with these eyes or these eggs or whatever it truly is, that's what elevates his thoughts to a higher plane. So it's just like, as we were saying before, where he actually wants these phantasms in his brain so that way he can elevate his thoughts to a higher plane. And when we look at the Accursed Brew, it tells us the inside of the skull was forcibly searched for eyes as evidence by innumerable scratches and indentations. So it's like there literally is something inside of people's brains that Master Willem and the Bergenworth scholars are actually after. And these actual physical things are called eyes. So it's like, 
there are eyeballs inside of people's brains, right? Well, maybe. Because the village, it has all of these slug creatures everywhere, right? They use them as, like, candles. There are, like, the snail women and, like, these big underground, I don't know, vats of slugs? I don't even know what to call it. And then, you know, Cause herself is just, like, a giant slug. So it's like, I think what's going on is that this village, they were hosting these slugs inside their bodies. And those slugs were like laying eggs inside of their bodies. So that way they can have these eggs and basically be like these incubators for cause or something. So the inside literally are either eyes inside of people's brains or it's eggs inside of people's brains, phantasm eggs. And when people get those phantasm eggs inside of their inside of their brains, when they have these beings from higher planes inside of their skulls, they're able to see things that are from other worlds. They're able to see the amygdala. So it's like, even though they aren't literally eyes, they basically act like eyes. When you get a phantasm uh, egg inside of your skull, it's like you're able to see more of the world and you're able to see these things that you normally shouldn't be able to. And that kind of brings us back to that line from the uh, from the uh, milkweed rune again, where it says, "Phantasms guide us and lead us to further discoveries." But if the eyes aren't literally like eyeballs, they're just eggs that sort of act like eyes. Then why does Master Willem have all of these eyeballs around his college? And like that, that kind of brings me back to the uh, Ludwig video again, where it's like, "Well, the eye absorbs the moon's energy, and that's what attracts these phantasm slugs to the eye." or the vermin, or whatever it is, and they, they feast on the little bits of moonlight. So it's like, the reason why Master Willem wants all of these eyeballs is because there are bugs living inside of the eyeballs. That's what he really wants. The eyes are just kind of like incubating these, these bugs, these creatures, whatever it is. And then if we look at the black sky eye, it says, soft eye blessed by a phantasm. So yes, so it's like, there are phantasms that are inside of people's eyes. And if Master Willem has all of these eyes around his college, if he has these you know, gardens of eyes, and as the one winged pointed out. In the guidebook, it says that Master Willem is using the gardens of eyes to harvest the eyes off of them. Like, they literally are like a garden, like a garden that grows fruit. Well, the gardens of eyes are supposed to be growing eyes, and then Master Willem harvests the eyes off of them. It's like, there are bugs living in those eyes, and that's what Master Willem really wants. So it is a bit confounding about, like, well, what exactly is the inside? You can make a case of, like, well, it's just inhuman knowledge. You can make a case that it is uh, these phantasm eggs. Or you can make a case that, no, it's literal eyeballs inside of people's brains. I mean, what exactly is going on here? The inside is just, like, how much of the world I know. Oh, okay. I know this one. Okay. Richie, Richie, okay. I know it. Okay. Inside is a stat that represents the depth of inhuman knowledge. Needed... To ring special bell, but induces frenzy. Yeah, there we go. Thank you. <laughs> there you thank go. you. <laughs> I had the Bloodborne <laughs> wiki page <laughs> <on> ins- <laughs> right on insight. Yeah. The, there you go. The insight mechanic is probably lifted from the Call of Cthulhu role playing game, but it does it backwards because in Call of Cthulhu, you start with you have a stat called sanity, and it's basically like your your sanity's hit points so it goes down when you see and do things that like in bloodborne your insight would go up so like in call of cthulhu you know like it's a dark uh creepy night and you see like a tentacle coming out of a well you would lose sanity in bloodborne it inverts that and it says so like when you see these strange monsters in these you have these experiences with like other planes of reality you you gain insight so uh, yeah the idea is like this is um i'm experiencing more of the world around me and i'm i'm learning more about like that there's there's another world beyond what i know i'm becoming more in touch with it and then do you have any ideas on like why like because because it works with like frenzy right where it's like the more insight you have yeah 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 the easier you are to frenzy yeah any idea why frenzy is frenzy i think frenzy is just called insanity in um Japanese one. The idea is just like the the more of the world that you're aware of, the easier it is to send you like further over the edge. This like that's that's Call of Cthulhu as well. Like the the lower your sanity is, the easier it is to like do mental damage to you. But like if you look at the um the way they represent Madman's knowledge and the wisdom of the great right. ones, it's like it's a skull with an actual like kind of phantom slug crawling out of it. Yeah. Yeah. And, like, if you look at the, the brain sucker enemy, the brain suckers are, like, they're, 
not outright stated, but it's like 95% implied, that those are people who took in too much insight and mutated into these things. And they are, like, they're a they're basically a corpse with a slug slash squid in the in the cranium. Like, um, they're not. If you look at they're they're based on the design of like a mind flayer from D and D, and they also show up in Demon Souls. And in that, it's a person with like a squid for a head. In this one, it's like a, a human body, but like the face has. There's something living inside. It's like a separate organism that's living in the in the skull, and it's like projecting itself through the front and. You can notice this when you fight them, like, the skull actually splits open and this thing sort of, like, oozes out of it. The the phantasms and everything, like, uh... It's, it's odd because, like, you're talking about them as phantasms because they're not, like, 100% a physical thing. They're partially, like, spiritual and strange and magic. <laughs> so, like, I think the idea is, that, yeah, you can get, like, these parasite slug things living in you that are feeding off how in tune you are with the with the dreamlands and with the uh the strangeness of the world that's hidden yeah but like i don't know if it's literally like eggs yeah i i think it's like best to not take a lot of the phantasm stuff like 100% literally <laughs> yeah. like a lot of things cuz like the whole point is that they're they're not just slugs they're like something that exists on another plane of reality and they can like like, the whole point of, like, a call beyond is it's a slug, but if you squeeze it, it opens up a portal to space. Yeah. That, like, an exploding star shoots through. So, like, they're clearly, like, at the very least, um, half in our world and half in another world. All right, so that will do it for this episode of You Choose Lore. Um, I believe we're just going to have three questions for this one. And so take note of this survey where I haven't given people the option to put in, to, like, write in their own answers if they want. Uh, so the reason I took that out is because the surveys are anonymous. So if you anonymously give me an answer, I won't be able to give you credit in the final video or anything. If you want to like add on and kind of contribute your own theory, your own idea, leave a comment in this YouTube video. Uh, so that way I can actually like give you credit in the final video. Uh, so I think that's kind of how I'm going to do things from now on. All right. So this video was, uh, you know, long enough as it is. So I will, I will just get going then. So, all right. So have a, have a good, goodbye.